everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name's Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out my brand new CNC build called Matilda. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to check out my previous video, go and watch that one first. It's about the build of the table. But in today's video, we're gonna be checking out how far I've come so far and watching it move for the very first time. So let's get started. So since you last seen the machine, I've made some huge progress. I've mounted my Z-axis, I've put my spindle on, I've got my control box on, I've added LEDs, lights, I've also put my, um, my motors on as well, and I've put these really cool panels on the side. Um, so this machine to me is something really special, something that's pushing my ability. And I'm a person to kind of get my hands in there and trial and error but there has been a huge amount of planning into this machine. This has been about eight months in the planning, um, a lot to do in the CAD program beforehand to check how everything was gonna work and be put together. So I've made a lot of decisions with this machine and some things that people might not agree with, but it's certainly something that's really special to me and something that's not just an engineering form, something that's not just strong and rigid, but I wanted to create something that was aesthetically pleasing and something that um, was really bespoke and really special to me. So I hope you like what I've done so far. Now let's talk about the wiring really quickly and the cable management. As you can see from the front point of view, you can't see a lot of the cables. Traditionally, you'd have a lot of your cable chains running across the top, but that's something that I wanted to kind of hide and make disappear. So on the sides here, I have put in my um, panels which protect the wiring going down the sides. So that covers it up and kind of makes it disappear, which is really exciting because that means that it's not getting tangled up in anything. But I've actually mounted all of my X-axis wiring behind the X gantry. Now, I was considering about um, having this uh, either done vertically behind this gantry, but I've actually decided to do this as a horizontal. So that means that the, the cables are laying down and moving with that X axis as it goes along. Now there was a couple of issues with me doing it this way is that um, it's obviously plastic. Those cable chains don't really hold their own weight on this angle very well. So I've had to put in some extra shelves or extra um, guides for that cable chain to make sure that it keeps um, perpendicular with the machine as it moves, but it works really, really well. And a huge thank you goes out to PCB Wave for milling these 20 millimeter panels. They are absolutely beautiful. They're 6061 aluminum. They are anodized in black and bead blasted to absolute perfection. Now they have saved me so much time in milling these out for me and delivering. I haven't had to do them myself and saved me a lot of time and a lot of worries in the process plus also making the build go so much quicker. But PCBWay also have a whole lot of other manufacturing processes such as injection molding, 3D printing, sheet metal, and also CNC machining. So I'm so happy that PCBWay were able to help me out with this project. On my previous WorkBee CNC, I created a really cool control panel for that CNC. It was 3D printed, I made my own PCBs, I had to figure out a whole lot about electronics and how to control all those different types of things, but it was hectic. I had to put a lot of time into creating and building it and 3D printing, and there was a whole lot of different variables that made that process take so long to do. It was certainly worth it. I learned so much from that process. And one thing that I did learn was that I didn't want to put that much effort into making a control panel again. So in this build, I created something that was really unique and still very useful. And it also looks really, really cool. This is my control panel. It's all 3D printed. And as you can see, it has some really cool LED um, ring buttons on the front of it. it has my e-stop so e-stop click it everything shuts off automatically it has also some easy storage at the front i can put my spanners and things like that as well uh, after a lot of research i kind of fell upon um, an idea which i was scrolling ally express one day and i found that these they had these relays and they these relays are powered by this esp32 now i really like this esp32 because you can do so much with it. And one thing that I found that you can do with it is you can load um, WLED onto these ESP32. So WLED is a project uh, mainly based for control of um, addressable LED strips um, and LED projects. But I thought, is it possible to load WLED onto something like this where you're able to switch on and off some relays but also control it using button inputs. And that was something that was really important to me, um, was to be able to control these relays by physical buttons, but also take advantage that WLED was for an LED project. Can I also control my machines 
uh, LEDs from this board as well. So um, at the end of the day that I'd be using two different control boards, one for the main control of the, the functions of the machine and one to control the CNC. So I'll get onto that one a little bit later, but this one here, I wanted to start with how I was gonna wire this up. So what I've done is I've, um, I've actually done some research on two different uh, types of boards. I've got this one, this is the Lily Go one. Um, and then this is just the, the stock standard, no name, no brand one. Um, and they both have very similar functions. So they both power up to 30 volts each. One of the boards does have this USB connection, but you have to get this TTL connection. Um, that essentially just provides the, the USB that it can load it directly onto the board there. Now, this is a good idea. It has all in one and it's much easier to load. However, using this board, I had a lot of issues with the button inputs and it would constantly corrupt the, the software on it. Um, and I just had a lot of issues overall. So I decided that I didn't want to use this one because it was a little bit too unpredictable and it didn't do what I wanted it to do. Um, now, this is the one I've ended up going. There's a couple of downsides about this is that um, it's obviously you can't use a USB just like the other one. You can't just plug in a TTL connection um, and upload your sketch. You actually have to use these pins at the back here to um, to manually put a USB connector into to flash the firmware. But once it's flashed, you don't have to worry about it. It's already up there and you can also update it um, over the air as well. Um, it does have your power input, but I did find it running at uh, 24 volts that there was a slight hiss on the top end, but it's nothing really that I'm too worried about. There was no overheating. I did check it with my thermal camera, um, but there was just the off-putting um, slight hiss, but it's gonna be in a machine that's gonna be far louder than um, what, what it should be. And it does come with these little um, headers as well that you can solder in and then you can make little connections to put in. So when I was wiring this up, I've, I've found that you can put um, about seven inputs um, and one output. So um, what I've done with this input is I'm only really taking advantage of five of the relays, the first one to five relays, I think it goes this way, one to five. And I'm using these five inputs as um, button inputs. Um, and then I could also take advantage of these ones too. They, they could be just software controlled. So do other stuff like turn LEDs on and off or turn other things on and off that I don't need direct buttons for. Um, but what I found is that I've used one of these pins for an output to control the LEDs. And then I found five successful input pins that I could use to control each relay separately. So in today's build, I've decided to go for um, using these push buttons. Now these push buttons are really handy. They're only a momentary button. So when they click, that's all that they do. They just create that connection through that one press and then they turn off again. Um, and what I found is that through WLED, you can set different presses. So for example, a one single press could action a certain change of lights or a change of the relay, and then a slightly longer hold would then do another action. So I've decided for my build today that one button press would turn something on and a slightly longer hold would turn it off. So the other benefit about these little push buttons is they have an LED ring that's around them. Now, the unfortunate part about these is that if you look on the back of them, they have separate inputs for each RGB um, little LED in there. So that means that you had to control it individually and they weren't addressable. So I've gone ahead and found that you can buy these WS2811 chips um, through AliExpress. Now these ones say that they're a 12 volt input, but that's mainly if you're using like a traditional uh, LED that doesn't have its own voltage protection. I've been able to run successfully uh, 24 volts using one of these chips. So um, what you do is that you just wire these in and I can wire the directly to the RGB channels of this and this will control the RGB um, effect that happens on here. So this is mainly just for the light control or changing of colors. And, and this is a chip that you would readily find on one of the older LED strips that you could buy. They've updated these and there's much modern versions that are integrated with the LEDs themselves. But this one, because I needed to control the external LEDs, these were perfect for this application. 
So I've gone ahead and I've added the LED under here, wired it to the RGB, um, also put these really quick connectors in. So one of the connectors is the um, drawing from the signal, one is sending the signal out to the next pin, and this is also for the button press pin. So this just makes it really easy for me to connect it up when it comes time to installing it. I've got all this hooked in now and I'm just testing out the lights. So this would be the front of the machine as if I was to use it. So I've based these buttons upon one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Um, these will be the control of like things such as my spindle, my vacuum control, uh, my LED lights, um, air as well. Over here will also be a pause and resume button as well. And then I've got my e-stop here as well. So that's nice and easy just to um, have direct access to. So what I'm gonna do now is that I'm gonna hook this up to my machine, um, put it on, wire it in, um, and fingers crossed, let's see how it goes. So for my idea with the lighting, I wanted to go for an idea that it would allow the lighting to be diffused over most of the surface. It, I mean, it wouldn't be uh, the entire distance, but mainly where the X axis is. Now, one of the issues that I found on my work CNC, I used some LED strips and I just inserted it into the V slot and that worked out really well. However, I had a couple of issues. The first one was is that the light just wasn't diffused enough, it wouldn't spread out enough, it was very directed underneath. And uh, the second thing was it was very hard to um, place the LED strip under there and then be able to remove it. So I wanted to come up with an idea that would allow me to insert an LED strip but allow lots of diffusion and go for something that was kind of, um, kind of new and, and give it a bit of an experiment. So I came up with these 3D printed profiles. Now these are just printed in clear PLA. Um, and these are done in vase mode. So I've just created a profile. And what this profile does is allows me to insert it under the, the X axis and into the C beam. So this is uh, the C beam grabs hold of it and it clips in really nicely. So I've had a bit of an experiment with um, this super bright uh, LED strip. Um, unfortunately, it does get a little bit hot and I was worried that it would make the plastic a little bit warped. So I, I initially had the LED strip inserted inside this profile and I just wasn't happy that that was going to stop it kind of melting or falling apart over time. So I decided as an additional uh, cooler, I've got this um, aluminium strip and what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert this, uh, well, place the LED strip on top of this uh, aluminium strip and then insert it into these 3D printed profiles. So this will allow it to cool down before it then touches the plastic, well I hope anyway, um, and it just gives it something really rigid to hold on to. Um, as well as these plastic pieces, you can see that this uh, will create some really nice diffusion and allow that light to disperse in different ways. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to mount my LED strip onto the aluminium and then insert it into these profiles. So. Here we go. So I've finished putting this together um, and it's come together pretty well. I just had some issues with sliding in the aluminium um, just because of the burrs on the end of the aluminium and also on the 3D printed part, so it's sometimes hard to insert it because it's a pretty close tolerance. But uh, besides that, it's um, inserted and ready to go. I've just got a 12 volt battery pack here, it has a DC connection. So I should be able to just uh, put this in and see how that looks. There we go, like not too bad. Um, I think that's quite bright and on screen, you can probably see it's uh, a lot brighter on screen. Um, so I think that it's gonna do exactly what I wanted it to do. I've got like that diffusion kind of has enough uh, spread of light. So I should be able to get 
um, if I put it up to the height it should be at, um, it should be able to get a good uh, 800 mil to a meter of light on either side. Um, this is going to be mounted under my under the X carriage. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, press fit that in. That should just clip straight in, and this should be the fastest part of this uh, small build. Here we go. You may have realized by now that I put some LEDs down the sides of the machine and this is not only as an aesthetic uh, approach to uh, the machine and putting some cool LEDs in but it's actually as a very useful thing. I'm going to program um, these LEDs to change color depending on different needs of the machine. So one of the things is that if the machine dust collector is full these um, LEDs will certainly flash a color like red or something and that will prompt me that I need to go and change the, uh, the dust boot or the, the dust collector and just ensuring that the use of the machine goes uh, smoothly and safely too. So I'm really excited to talk about the control system I've used on this CNC. I'm going with Fluid NC once again for this build, uh, but I've ended up going for a very different control board than I have um, in the past. So in the past, I've gone for uh, control boards with uh, an ESP32, but unfortunately they're mainly made for a 3D printer. That means that some of the outputs are used for like a hotbed or a hot end and kind of rendering them useless for a CNC build. So for this time around, I'm really lucky to get my hands on a root controller version 3 board. Now this is an amazing board. It has every input and output has been isolated from the central processor of this board. That means that you have certainly ease and also assurance that your CNC um, program is going to go efficiently. But it also has some really cool things such as two onboard relays so you can control larger powered devices two MOSFET control devices too, so lower uh, DC input control devices too. You can control that all by the software. Um, you can also use the eight dedicated inputs and they're all isolated as well. It has six axes of control. So I'm using um, two for my Y axis, one for my X and one for my Z, but I'm also considering of putting a rotary axis on later and down the track, but it's really cool that I have six to be able to play with and not being hindered on my ability Ability of what I wanted to do with this board. Now another really cool thing that it has a dedicated laser output so not only is this board made for milling machines but it is also made for laser machines too so it's really flexible in what you can do with this board and the different types of machines that you can use it on too. Um, the other beauty about it, it also has an RS485 module so that means it can control your VFD spindle it can talk to one another between the board and the VFD and say power up power down or if it hasn't powered up then it can stop the program and say hey look um, don't go ahead because something's wrong with your your spindle so they're the type of the things that's really cool for these types of builds and also adds those extra safety features as well so Pete from Root CNC has given me a fantastic deal for my viewers today 15% off until the end of August 2023. So if you'd like to purchase one of these, you'll find the link down below. I've used these types of uh, motor drivers, but unfortunately I, I think I've made a mistake in my choice of motor drivers. I don't really like them too much. I did like them on a smaller machine that I had built. They are a TMC 2160OC uh, motor driver and I thought, hey, I'll give them a go on a much bigger machine where I'm using much larger motors but it does struggle with producing enough output. Now, I did buy the, the newer versions of these, which are, are meant for larger motors, um, but I wanna do a, a bit of a road test or a stress test on these motor drivers so I can compare them to their other versions and that will be on a video for later on down the track. Now, I'm gonna show you quickly on some of the movement of this machine, 
but unfortunately I haven't got the spindle hooked up so I can't do any cutting at this stage but that's all going to be in videos upcoming. So here's a couple of shots of the machine moving. It moves pretty well but I certainly could make it a lot quicker and a lot faster using larger stepper motor drivers. But for now this is a really cool um, start and I'm really happy in how far this has come so far. So if you've enjoyed today's build and enjoy what I've done so far with my machine and if you haven't subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe button give me a thumbs up and guys I will see you next time for some really cool things coming up so see you then.